Well, hello. We are starting this video a little bit weird because yesterday when I made all these pieces that I was going to show you how to make, the video that made them is gone. So here they are fired and I will show you coming up. Oh, look at the sun, how it was done. Okay, so this is how I make my part sheets. Um, I had started doing this for you yesterday on video, and I don't know where that video went. I went to move it to my computer. It was nowhere to be found on the card. So, we're going to do it again. I start with um, something to make it easier to pick everything up with. This is a little five by seven, so actually this is gonna be a little bit smaller today than yesterday's was. And when you put your stencil down, you see how it hangs off and then it's not really flat. I will take and lift up the end. And these stencils are actually just from the um, craft store. I think, I think these were Hobby Lobby. And, um, that you can find them almost anywhere. So anyhow, what I do is I gently put it on there. If I have some spots that I don't want anything to get on like that, I will cover them with paper. And I've got a really giant thing of black powder that sounds bad. It's not black powder. It's black frit powder. <laughs> I don't have a giant tub of black powder. And I will use just a regular kitchen strainer. You can actually get smaller. I have this one. I'm trying not to bang the camera. And I have this one. And actually, since we're doing lettering, I might use the smaller one just to save the hassle of cleaning up and being so careful when you lift your stencil up because when you lift it up you have to lift it straight up and away or else you're going to end up with a mess so let's try this little bad boy and see if we can't keep it cleaner and i see that this stencil is a little bit warped. One of the things I do like to do with my stencils, especially when they're new like this, um, is I'll hit them with a hair dryer to make them a little bit warm. And then I'll put something real heavy on them to flatten them out completely. Just don't get them too warm because they will melt. Um, and on lettering, you have to kind of make sure, depending upon the outcome you want, you have to kind of make sure that um, there's enough frit in there because you, as we all know, with frit, it tends to disappear easily. And I don't know if this is actually making this any better than uh, doing it with a big one or not. I'm still getting some in the centers here, but that's okay. One of the other things I thought I might try, maybe I'll do that right now because we're left to experiment, is I got this really cool doohickey. Whoops, bang the camera. This really cool doohickey here that you can put some frit into powder and uh, it will see just like that it'll fall out and direct so I wonder we're going to experiment here this is going to take forever this works good if you're trying to do a mandala or um 
just little designs or patterns. On the turtle one, I wanted to fill in the blank spots. Yeah, this is this is not going to be a method for this. We'll just go back to the little. But now we know. And I'm just tapping this. You can't actually run your fingernail and get it to come out as well. I'm just going to go over that again because I don't think it came out solid. I know one of the other cool things I have is like this vibrating pen thing that you can put powder into and make really cool lines with. I'll look for that. Maybe we can do that. Um, I've actually just moved into this studio. I guess it's almost been a year now, but it just doesn't seem like it. And I haven't gotten everything unpacked. I've been going through um, my parents' personal items and my stuff from moving and uh, my parents had a lot of stuff so I'm still going through a lot of their stuff. They have decided to go to heaven together which they always said they'd go together. And this spot here is sticking up just a little bit, so I'm imagining there's going to be some uh, powder that escaped. Now this is the tricky part. You have to be ready. And I will pick this up first and pull it off to the side so I don't get it on anything. Now I put this little sticker on here to make it easier to lift up. And I've got a hole here, so I should be able to grab this fairly easily. One, two, three. Oh, I should have grabbed the other end. And you just bang it off on the side so you can save your powder. Because we all know how expensive stuff is. Now, if it really bugs you since it's a stencil, and you've got like that gap there with the, the um, where the stencils connect... You could take my little doohickey and fill it in, but it's not going to be eh, perfect. And if it really bugs you too, you can go through and get some of this overspray off with a little brush. But I will warn you, the more you mess with it, the more opportunity you have to mess it up. <laughs> Tell me or ask me how I know. So, I don't normally do too much to it. I will just pick this up, take it over to the kiln, and fire it. So, I'll be right back. And so, to save your powder, bang the camera bad. I'll have to edit that. To save your powder, you should always do this on a piece of paper. And I prefer to do it on a smoother piece of paper because it makes it easier to pick it up and put it back in the jar. So, I will just put that back in. <coughs> and then I give it a little shake behind me. 
<clears throat> and technically you should be wearing a mask, but I know that you will not hear me well if I put one on. So I don't have one on. And that cough was more or less my allergies to the golden rod right now. So the next thing we'll do is um, I've got these little six by 12s. And we're in frame with that. And I will take, let's see, this right here. Now, the last batch, I actually cut it to fit. And I probably should have done that here too. But let me show you something. This is how it came out. I did black first, and then I put orange over the top of it. And I did that because I've had success in the past with, here we go, these where I put black down and then I just kind of put a transparent color over top. And you couldn't really see the transparent color on the black. You can on this one because the black was so thin. And I think that's my problem with this. Is I didn't make my black thick enough to absorb the orange. And the other thing that I like is this, uh, this orange is really nice. But I love this carnelian color. And I think this is transparent where this was actually an opaque orange. So... Most of the opaques don't show opaque because we're only contour fusing. Um, I either tack fuse or contour fuse. But the transparent stay very, very transparent. So I think I'm gonna try it with carnelian this time and see if it'll blend in better. So let me get my black. And I'm doing this right on the edge. See, we got a little bump there, so let's flip it over and see if it lays flatter. Not really. So, we'll help it lay flatter, I think. That doesn't really work either, does it? We'll just be careful and take it like it comes. So, I need a thicker layer of black. I'm not worried that it's gonna overhang that side. Uh, it's not gonna bug me, because we're still gonna get the pattern, and in most cases, we're gonna be cutting this up anyway for our projects. So I'm gonna fill this in really well. I forgot to cover that, but it's not on the glass, so it's okay. It's a nice layer of black. Let's do this side. Get our tiger stripes going. And I can brush this off, but I'm gonna put this paper here just to help me out a little bit. The less you have to clean, the better. And I'll show you what to do with the extra part of the glass there by adding either more of this or another stencil Okay, and actually we will do that right now. I'll pull this off. We're gonna do the lift it straight up and say a little prayer. Looks good. Tap it off, I didn't give myself enough paper over here so I'm gonna lose some of my black, but that's okay. 
we will be all right with that. And since it's in my way for putting another stencil, we're gonna continue our tiger stripes, I think. So I'll put this out here to hold the stencil. Line this up. This part that's sticking up high is actually off the glass, so it's not a big deal. But I would rather it be closer. That's a little closer. So, take our black again. We're going to fill this in. We're going to try and avoid going over here because I don't want to lay paper on top of that. So sometimes what you have to do is get creative on how you hold your sifter. Now we can flatten back out again. And just to test, I'm not putting this on quite as thick because I want to see I want to see how that carnelian comes through. Alrighty, and the gentle straight up go. Alright. Now, to save my black before I do the carnelian color, I'm going to put this over here off camera for a second. After I make a little bit more room. And I'm going to save my black to the uh, container over here. Shake off my paper just a little bit. bring this back. I've moved my camera to the other side that I normally have it on and I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not. We'll have to see how today goes. Now I'll take this carnelian. Um, got this from AAE. That's why it's in a different container because I think they buy bulk and, and uh, divide it out for you. Where bullseye normally this size would come in this container so and I do wipe my spoon with my hand just a little bit to get any residual color off of there if you wanted to be really tricky you could uh, use a different spoon for each one now I'm going to cover this entire sheet with the orange That's going to go into my gaps, but I'm not going to do it as thick as the black. I'm just going to make sure everybody's covered. We don't have any super duper thin spots. Carnelian is one of my favorite bullseye colors. I love buying it in sheets and powders and fritz. It's just such a pretty color. Um, it's not cheap. You know how each one is different priced based off of what minerals go into it. I'll have to look up and see if I can figure out what minerals go into carnelian because it's almost up there with pink. That's why I didn't want to uh, leave my black down because I'm definitely going to save my carnelian. So, here we have it. I will take this over to the kiln and clean up my spot.
and then we'll show you like a Scraffito thing. Okay. Next thing I'll show you how to do is kind of a freehand thing. There's two types of freehand that I like to do. Well, there's more than two types, but <laughs> my plumber actually left this. I do have one of these. I just haven't found it yet. But my plumber left this, so we're going to use it today. It's got a bunch of different sides to it. Um, <laughs> and, of course, it's full of caulk, but that won't matter. And we're going to make a um, kind of a swirly background with this olive green and just have some fun with it. What I like about this is you can use it for uh, trees or depending upon the color you do. Now some people put it on like this and we're gonna do this today because I want it to be a little bit thicker have to go all the way to the edges. Normally I try and go in rows back and forth um, and I tap it. But this way puts it on a little bit thicker if you shake it. You're just not as uh, able to direct it. So I'll alternate between tapping and shaking just to get a really good coverage here because I want it to make um, furrows, like lift it up good. Um, when you do the, I gotta quit saying, um, when you do the contour fuse or a tack fuse, you can do either one. I've done tack and contour. I tend to prefer contour, um, but it's up to you. It depends on how much texture you want to see in your piece. And of course, if you do a tack fuse, you're gonna have more texture. I like the contour because normally I cut this up and put it in other projects. So, we have our green out. We're gonna try this little side. And you just go through and have some fun. And I lift up a little bit and push down a little bit and see how much powder came back up there. It's okay, because that's what's giving us our furrows. And I'm taking most, almost all of this off to get my patterns. but this is kind of like a, a Zen garden thing. You can just really have fun with it. And if you take off too much and you want to put some back, go, go ahead and do that. That's not an issue. I mean, sometimes I could just do this for a long time. I'll, I'll stop here because you'll get tired of watching. So <laughs> let me pause and put this one in the kiln and I'll show you another option. Okay, so we have another sheet here. I'm going to put some pine green down. I think you saw in the kiln I had one that was kind of Christmassy. Like little hollies and uh, Christmas trees. So this pine green is a transparent color. Going to put it on fairly thick. Now, one thing you can do, and I bumped the camera, sorry. One thing you can do is you can mist it with water just ever so slightly. I mean, don't saturate it. You can if you really want to. There is a technique out there where you can layer colors, put water in between the layers. And you know what? I have not tried that with just contour fusing. Every time I've done that technique, it's been a full fuse on two layers of glass. 
and I, obviously here we're using just one layer. So, one of our tests may be to do a multicolor different from the tiger. I'm trying to get these edges. And if you want to be super uniform, you go in rows and um, and then go up and down. So you'd go lengthways and and then this way. Frankly, you can normally see where you've missed or what looks shallower on your piece if you just kind of step away from it and look for shadows. This looks pretty good. Might be a little thin there. I'm just going to use this up and because we're going to pour the extra back into the container anyway. Now, I got these really cute little teeny tiny cookie cutters. And I actually was using this when I was doing, um, whoa, metal clay. So I could cut out jewelry pieces. But they work really good on this too. So all you need to do is make a gentle impression. And then when it's fired, you'll see the tree. I um, will do a variety of thicknesses, so to speak. I just kind of put it down and just wiggle it a little bit. And sometimes my hand will get carried away and wiggle it a lot. And you can go off the edge just because you don't know where you're going to cut it and use it. So that gives you like a continue pattern. The only thing I try to do is remember to switch it up some. See, there's my hand doing its thing. Won't matter. It'll just be slightly different. Not so different that it doesn't blend in. Sorry about that. Some days my hands do not like to cooperate with me. Other days, it's just fine. And if you notice on the one, I'll show you with the hearts. There's another wild one. Um, I overlap them in some cases. Here, I want this to actually look like a bunch of Christmas trees on my, on my glass. So when I cut it up and use it, it's pretty obvious. Now we'll do the holly for the rest of them. And I'm going to kind of go quick with the holly because it's a lot smaller. And if I push it down and wiggle it like I did the tree, I find I get that more. So this one I go really fast. Now I'm into some thick powder. And if you don't like it, I mean, if for some reason it's not coming out how you want it to, I'm okay with this, but if you want it to be perfect on each one, nothing says you can't wipe the powder off and start again. That's the good thing about not wetting it. Like that one's kind of icky, but I'm not going to worry about it. But that's the good thing about not wetting it is you can just, like, I could wipe this half off and repowder it and do it over. Um, like, if you look at these circles, I, like, overlap the circles in here. And I did the same with the heart, but not so much. I just kind of touched here. I kept them somewhat separate so that you'd see the hearts better. Um, and I have a variety. I did some leaves and I actually sprinkled one 
with like a bunch of different colors, some greens and oranges and yellows and and um, did fall leaves, which was really cool. We might do some more of that as a matter of fact, maybe off camera. But anyhow, let me put this in the kiln and we'll do one more uh, test and we'll test it together. Okay, let's try. Well, let me show you here. I've got a couple of other samples that I did. This one's really light. It was um, transparent. I did it really light just to see, and I just scribbled. And then this is another one with the black and the red. And this one I did with like a turquoise blue and a white. I wasn't looking for like the reaction with like say dense white but I just wanted something different and I was just playing and it was I did that with a razor blade it was fun um, but I have the leaf cookie cutters so I'll put a link to these I think I got them on Amazon um, and of course I have an Amazon affiliate account because who doesn't anymore so full disclosure I'll probably make like three cents off of it if you buy them through my link but let's do the one with the water and we want some let's see this dark rose brown that would be pretty get some fall colors going here so I'm obviously not going to be able to salvage my powder because I'm going to be doing different colors but that's okay. I will just be more cautious on my edges to not go off too much and waste too much. So we'll put some brown over here. I like this rose brown. It's a pretty color. And good for fall, I imagine. the last of it out of my sifter. We'll do a little bit of this orange orange, really orange orange. I would do some spring green, but I'm not sure if we would get a chemical reaction. Could be fun. And I have a bunch of spring green, so maybe we will do that. We'll do a little of this pine green like we just used first, and then we'll maybe we'll coat the whole thing in the spring green. We'll have to think about that. Let's do some of this pine green. And this is what I expect to happen is these colors will get pulled up through the top layer colors. Let's go ahead and fill that in. Just to have a little variety going on. want to do blue with this. We'll put a little carnelian in here too. Put some of that over here now. Remember this one's transparent. But that's okay. I'm going to coat all of this with the spring green. Grab it. I like spring green, so it's a big container too. Let me 
put a little bit of water down like we were talking about. Yeah, this is not the fine, not the fine water mister. I have one that shoots really fine water. But since this was kind of like an ad hoc idea to go ahead and test it with one layer of glass on contour versus full, I was not set up with the correct water. I'm not going to do a super duper thick coat here. I mean, I want to cover everything, but I don't want to do it like really thick like we're going to go through because we already have the base layer. fall leaves and kind of crunch a few down there now these I definitely want to have them go to the bottom and I want that um, crunchiness on the side I think that's gonna help to bring the other colors through And I probably could have wet this layer as well. Let's see. It's like kind of a oaky shape. And I'm not going to worry about them overlapping a little. Or in some cases, I might even overlap them a lot. Um, don't have a super duper tiny one and I don't want to introduce another shape just yet I have a funny feeling this is gonna come out looking a little bit more abstract but hey it's an experiment let's have fun let me go put it in the kiln well good morning we have the kiln open and things look pretty darn good the um, the use of the transparent over the black worked much better and our leaves came out pretty darn neat I threw this one in and was testing see how I got the dots so that was just a test piece and then I put these in as a test piece well three inch squares and then here's our Christmas trees and hollies and our abstract that we can use as a cut up piece. And that little fish came out pretty darn cute too. And our faith, hope, and love. So, now you know how to make your own part sheets. Sorry, I'm kind of wobbly there. And I will probably do a part sheet part two because there's some other um, methods that I use sometimes that aren't hard to do, but will give you some ideas to try on your own. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like it, subscribe, and share.